Welcome to the Hornets Hivecast, presented by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. Here's your host, Sam Farber. Without further ado, let's welcome Rick Schnall, Gabe Plotkin, here for the first time to the Hornets Hivecast. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks a lot. Good to be here. We're thrilled to have you. It's only been a few weeks, maybe a couple months now, but how's it been owning an NBA franchise? I'll start on that one. Uh, you know what? It's been it's been great. We uh, we've obviously uh, been here a lot. We've had an opportunity to engage with uh, with the management team, with our basketball ops, and with the team. And um, you know, it's uh, it's everything we had hoped for and more. So uh, we're, we're taking it on, and and uh, we're having a lot of fun doing it. And uh, we're excited to to see how the team comes out at the uh, at the start. Uh, tonight, and uh, we'll see where we go from here. You guys have used two words a lot in your public comments. It really struck me. One is partnership. You want to be partners with the city, partners with all those involved here with the Charlotte Hornets, and also that you are stewards of the franchise, that it's not you know yours to do exactly whatever you want, that you're representing a larger community that loves and cares about this team. Why are those two words so important and meaningful to you in your tenure now in the role you have? Gabe, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think, you know, we love the game of basketball. You know, we want to be great stewards of, of uh, this franchise. But, you know, when we move on in life, the Hornets still going to be around. And, you know, with, with sports, you pass on that passion generation to generation. And so we think if we're – if we build a winning franchise, if we build a great team, we're going to have fans that, that pass that on you know, to the next generation, and we're going to have memories that get created that, that you know, really define this franchise. And so that's an exciting thing. We also have the ability you know, to impact lives in the community you know, with the actions that we take. So I think you know, when we say that, it's, it's understanding that this is a part of something beyond us and will continue on you know, after we're gone. Rick, how do you hope that mindset is reflected in what you guys do at the top of the organization? You, you know, uh, we represent the entire community. I think Gabe said it well, and and uh, how we how the organization performs on and off the court uh, is 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 we're out there to represent all of of Charlotte and North Carolina and the Carolinas for that matter. And uh, you know, we're we're about um, we obviously have a simple goal, which is to be the premier franchise in the NBA. And, and that goal is not just about winning games, but it's about the culture. It's about how we carry ourselves. It's about um, uh, the values that we have as, as an organization and, and how we reflect our, our city and our fans and, our, and all of our partners, our sponsors, et cetera. And, and, and it is, we, are, we are owners of the team, but, but we are stewards for the entire community and and our fan base, and, and uh, we have to carry ourselves in a way that, that we would all be proud. Rick Schnall, Gabe Plotkin, our guest today here on the Hornets Hivecast. We've seen you guys around the community quite a bit already and at many public events, but there's probably a lot of fans out there who haven't got a chance to get to know you. I'm sure you're going to be shaking a lot of hands over the first homestand and over your first season, but what's something that you would like fans to know about you as you take over the franchise? Gabe, we'll begin with you. Yeah, for for me personally, it's it's you know there's a couple things. One, you know, we love the game of basketball. You know, this is a real passion, and we're really excited to be doing it. You know, two, we're we're competitive. You know, anything we do, we want to win, and you know that's really important to us. And I think it should be really important to our fans. And you know, three, we want to do it in in the right way. You know, in a way that reflects high integrity. And so I think you know those are the most important things for our fans to understand when they think about how we're going to approach ownership. Rick, what should fans know about you? I think Gabe uh, nailed it. Uh, basketball is a huge passion of mine and has been for my entire life. And um, we're, we're incredibly focused on um, the, an organization that we can be proud of and that we can um, uh, help drive to, to great success on and off the court. And, and uh, for me – um, I, I, as Gabe said it, I am incredibly competitive. And so you know, what I would want people to know about me is, you know, I want to win in everything I do. And uh, I expect and we expect to win here. And um, we are we are going to win and uh, we're going to do it in the right way. And you win by getting the right people and setting the right culture and the right tone. 
and uh, doing it every day and being consistent, uh, working harder than, 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 than everybody else. And, and I think we, having been here, you asked the question earlier on, you know, or, you know, having been here now for several months, um, it, 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 it's going to work. It's going to work. We're going to do it. We're going to win. And, and uh, our competitive drive uh, w- wouldn't allow it for anything else. I'm sure that is music to every Hornets fan's ears right there, that mentality, that mindset. The first thing that you both said, the love of the game, it's clear and obvious. We recently had a chance to sit down with Mitch Kupchak and Steve Clifford on the precipice of the season, and that's the first thing they said about both of you. I think Mitch said specifically they have that Basketball Jones, which is one of my favorite songs from the original Space Jam album. Dating myself a little bit out there, but uh, but they said that you, you both have it. Where does that passion come from? Because a lot of people love sports or, or love a game, but most of us have you know a particular moment where that love really came to be. What is it for you that helped you fall in love with the game of basketball? Rick, let's start with you this time. Uh, um, well, I've played uh, sports all my life, and uh, there just is no sport for me like basketball. It's it's five people playing together as a team. Uh, you uh, develop bonds and relationships on the basketball court uh, and, and in my life uh, uh, like no other place. And I always say that uh, I can figure somebody out in about five minutes during a pickup game. Uh, is that someone I want to work with? Is that someone I would hire? Is that someone I want to play with? And uh, personalities come out pretty quickly. And um, I love the game. I love the, you know, I, I've, I've played it um, and, and I played it uh, since I was little, but I, but when I started to work, it became my passion and my hobby. And so I played basketball about five, five, five or six days a week for about 20 years post-college in lots of different things and camps and fantasy camps and uh, travel teams and over 40 teams and all kinds of things. And, and it was um, my passion, my fun, my social network. And um, that obviously led to a passion uh, in and around both playing but also watching and understanding the game and what makes people successful in the game. And uh, so I just love the love the sport. And, um, you know, I, I got uh, pretty lucky in 2015. I had an opportunity to invest in, in a team in the Atlanta Hawks. And uh, at that time, after doing that for a couple of years, I thought if I could put myself in a position – to be in a control position um, and have uh, an ability to, to combine my passion with my business experience, which has been in, in buying companies and working with companies, that I thought you know there'd be an opportunity to do something uh, that was unique among NBA teams. And so finding Gabe as a partner who is very like-minded and you know it's just I, you know for me personally, basketball is unique. It's it's not. I mean obviously. There are other sports. There's there's great sports in football and baseball. Those don't interest me. I just don't think the game itself is as interesting to me, which is great. I, and so to have the ability to get involved in a game that you feel so passionately about. Uh, and, yeah, Mitch, I know Mitch tells me to stop playing, but I'm still out there <laughs> playing pickup. I just played. We just, I just, we just got the staff out there and played for, for the last hour and a half. And, you know, to me that's part of the passion. And, you know, I can't play like I used to, uh, but I still – get myself out there and it's there's there's nothing quite like making a shot or running up and down the floor and delivering an assist and it's just it's just a great just a it's just a great sport and a, and a special sport and so be able to be involved for me is is really special you really feel that love we can tell it comes through the microphone clearly here and I, i'm i'm right there with you the best sound of the world to me is a perfect shot going straight through the net there is nothing like it gabe what about you where's does your passion come from and i also need to know now in the interview process for this partnership did you have to play five on five with Rick? was that part <laughs> i of it? haven't yet uh we need to yeah. um the uh you know, I I played growing up. I played in middle school. I played in high school. I was I was actually pretty small through a lot of high school, so that that probably helped me back a bit. But then in college, as I grew, you know, I would play. We had great teams, great intramural teams. I didn't I didn't play Division One, um, and then I played after college. And you know, I think you just said you know, there's nothing like the ball going through the net. I mean, the other day I was playing horse with with the kid who, uh, with the guy who coaches uh, my kid in, in in basketball and. 
you know, we were playing horse and I was draining threes and, you know, I was like, man, that, that sound, you gotta love that sound. So I, I agree. It's the best sound in the world. And I think with, with basketball, it's not a coincidence that as the world got exposed to the game and, you know, really took off after the, uh, you know, the Barcelona Olympics, you know, it's become such a popular global sport because it's easy in terms of accessibility. You just need a ball and a basket. You can do it by yourself. You do it with teammates and you can always be working on your game. And it's, uh, it's fast pace. There's a lot of scoring. I know a lot of Europeans and others like soccer and, and nothing against the, the local Charlotte FC team, but I really struggle to watch soccer. There's just not the kind of action that I want to see that happens on a basketball court. And so, um, it's something I'm really passionate about and, and uh, have enjoyed since I was a kid. Well, this Charlotte team definitely brings entertainment. You take over a squad that has LaMelo Ball, maybe the most entertaining player in the game. I'm sure that's one of the reasons for the answer to this question. But from both of you, what specifically about Charlotte made this the organization that you wanted to run? LaMelo is a fine answer, but what, whatever comes to mind. Gabe, let's start with you. Well, LaMelo's not my answer because when I invested initially, he was not on the team. So I, I, can't, I can't tell you that was uh, the case. But, I, you know, I do think Charlotte, it's, you know, we, we said this a couple times, you know, when we've spoken, but it was always perceived and it's still perceived. And I think, you know, that reflects to some degree the lack of success on the court. But, you know, it's always perceived at the bottom of the NBA. Even the ESPN recently had a poll and I think it had us 29th out of 30th and you know, that's sort of where you expect Charlotte to be. You know, we think as a city, and that's kind of defined how people perceive this organization and, and maybe the city to some degree. But when we looked at the city, when we look at the population growth, we look at the demographics, we look at the business climate, the geographical climate, um, how great a city it is to live in and want to be here and, and raise kids here. These were all huge positives, you know, a lot of corporate sponsorship opportunities. And, and so, you know, when we look at it today and when we fast forward 10, 15 years, we think it's going to become pretty apparent that, you know, Charlotte is one of the better cities in the NBA and certainly not at the bottom of that list. And so when that opportunity came to invest in such a great city, um, you know, we jumped at it. I, I really wholeheartedly believe in everything you just said. For my wife and I, when we moved here to Charlotte, that was a game changer. We can't imagine our lives anywhere else now. Rick, for you, same question. What is it that made Charlotte the attractive place that you wanted to take over a franchise in? Yeah, I think it's the ideal market. You know, it, 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 uh, as Gabe said, it's, it's not viewed as the number, uh, a top 10 market today in the NBA. And part of that is the size of the market, but also the performance that the team has had. And it's a, it's a great city. It's a growing city. It's incredibly well located. Uh, it has good weather. It has a, it has a uh, uh, very loyal and dedicated fan base. And um, we also have an opportunity to take a team that's not perceived to, have, to be great. In fact, the team hasn't been very good. Let's be frank. The team on the floor has not been very good when you have three playoff wins since 2004, we haven't delivered for our for our fan base or the community. So the opportunity to come into a, what I view as a great city in a great location that is growing uh, and all we have is upside. All we have is upside. And so, you know, there, there aren't many, uh, you know, when you think basketball, you think North Carolina and you think Indiana that, and maybe New York. You tell me, maybe maybe people argue Philadelphia, I don't know, or. Uh, maybe the new world is L.A., but I think North Carolina, I think Indiana, and so we have a chance to buy the professional basketball team in North Carolina in a growing city. So we're, we're – um, and to be, to be frank, since we've been here, it's better than we thought. I mean, it, it, is, it is a wonderful city, uh, and uh, it's everything we had hoped for and more, and, and it's, the, it's, it's, it's the right city at the right time for, for great success. It is certainly a place that loves its hoops and it loves its players. And I think one thing that's telling for anyone doing the rankings out there, I think there's something very telling about where players want to retire. You see a lot of players, whenever they end their careers, they end up here. And that says something. I, I think this is a place where we should be able to attract players. You know, having been in Atlanta, uh, we thought we could attract players to Atlanta as well. I think this is a place we absolutely should be able to attract free agents uh, to play both because of the quality of the city and a great place to live and the type of franchise we are going to create, this should be a very desirable place for players to play. Rick Schnall, Gabe Plotkin, our guest today here on the Hornets Hivecast. You talked about building a winner and that there is a process to it. But I'm curious where you think the team is 
along that route. You've already seen the team sign to the first ever rookie max contract in franchise history, LaMelo Ball. That is certainly an accelerant towards where you want to go. Where do you see the team on that path with LaMelo in the full long term? Rick, we'll start with you. Well, we have a young team. We have a really talented team. You know, we have a, 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 a very good core. And if you think about the young players we have with LaMelo, who's now signed for the next five years, uh, Brandon Miller, who's second pick in the draft, who we're very high on, Mark Williams, uh, who's in his second year, who we, we think can be a, a really impactful player in the league. We feel great about that young base. We obviously have two vets in Terry and, and Gordon. And so we think we have a competitive team. Uh, you know, we think we have uh, a young team that should compete for the playoffs this year. I'm sure you heard that from, from – I haven't heard their podcast yet, but I'm sure you heard that from Cliff and Mitch. You can check it out. They're in the archives <laughs> now. They both said it. You know, I think we, we expect to compete for a playoff spot. Uh, we, we do have a lot to build on here. Uh, and we have, we have you know, some, some young, talented players coming off the bench as well. And um, – so the outlook is is pretty bright for this team. Most teams that win in the NBA have uh, more of a veteran presence than we have on our team. And so we're building towards something. But we certainly have uh, the pieces to, to start that building process. Gabe, what excites you about the young core that is in place here, led by LaMelo Ball, but as mentioned, there's a lot of players yeah. that make it up. Yeah, I think you know, when you look at, if, if I call the young core, just take the, you know, the young, you know, Lamelo, Brandon, and Mark. Let's say, you know, you have three guys that um, high, you know, high basketball IQs, uh, share the basketball, um, you know, work hard at the game. You know, f- in terms of their positions, they're both, you know, they're all sort of large for their position, so they have kind of great positional length. Um, they have the ability to impact the game on both ends. And, you know, it's something that we want to continue to work on. And, and they also, you know, they, they seem to fit together in terms of the pieces. I remember when the Celtics got, you know, they had Paul Pierce and they got Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen. And, like, it was seamless overnight the way those guys kind of played together. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense when you understand their games. I think with us, you know, with LaMelo, Brandon, and Mark, you could see something. I mean, th- there are differences, but, but you can see something similar where, you know, you got a great ball handler and passer. You got a secondary ball handler and a guy who can really shoot the ball well. You got a guy to run pick and rolls with and, and defend the middle. And 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 you got guys that are really good in transition. And so I think it's it's really unique to have a core that also can fit together and you can see them evolve over time and, and become a real force in the league. My last question for you both: You've both been immensely successful in your professional lives and your personal lives. So you don't get here without having that being a prerequisite. But for the average person, when your stewardship here with this franchise is done many, 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 many years from now, this is probably going to be the thing that you're most well known for outside of your family and friends is being in charge of the Charlotte Hornets. When we get to that spot way, way, way down the road, what do you hope fans think of you for or know you for when your time is done here running the Charlotte Hornets? Gabe, we'll start with you. I mean, in my dream, it would be a championship. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really what we're all after, right? You know, we, you know, I know they had a ticker tape parade here after the first year to celebrate the fact that we had a franchise. Um, but, you know, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing that team won 15 to 20 games. So, you know, if we can, you know, deliver to this to this city a championship and all that comes with that in terms of, you know, growing the fan base, growing the business, you know, having people really be excited about Hornets basketball, that would be, you know, that would be the ultimate outcome. And I think, you know, that starts with building a winning culture, uh, you know, going about things the right way. And I think when they look back on our time and they say, well, these guys really, they were committed. They were willing to invest behind this team. They wanted to win. They wanted to compete. If we do those things, you know, it's it's hard to win a title. I mean, we'll have to see how that goes. You know, there's only one out of 30 teams that do it. And um, there's a lot of great players that have come and gone and, and never won a championship. And same with organizations. But I think that's the ultimate goal. But, you know, trying to build the right processes and structure to move to that point. If people look back on our time and say, wow, these guys committed everything they could to building a winning team and they won an awful lot, then I think we'll be successful. Rick, same question for you. What do you hope people say about Rick Schnall when you are done with this tenure here with the Hornets? Yeah, I think Gabe said it well. I hope people look back and say we were great stewards for the franchise, that we ran the business in a, in a consistent way, that we were approachable as, as individuals, 
uh, and that um, uh, we built a, an organization that could sustain uh, successfully well past our time and uh, hopefully we'll be remembered for, for building something special here in Charlotte. Well, as a member of the staff, it's a real thrill and honor to have you guys here. We're excited for the energy you bring, and we're excited to see what comes here this season and beyond for the Charlotte Hornets. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. That does it for this edition of the Hornets Hivecast. Remember, the HHC is available daily wherever you get your podcasts all throughout the NBA season with game previews every game day, reviews every day after, and in-depth interviews everywhere in between. I'm Sam Farber. It's been a pleasure and a privilege having you along, and we'll talk to you next time right here on the Hornets Hivecast. Thank you for listening to the Hornets Hivecast, brought to you by Senta, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. For more coverage, visit Hornets.com.